Welcome to a SparkPlace video tutorial on how to use our Epilog laser cutter and engravers. My name is Doug, and today we're going to cover the most generalized uses on these machines. In this video, we're going to cover and show you a full run of how to actually get something cut on this laser. We will also talk a little bit about the engraving process that is possible as well. This video is going to be broken up into a few parts. First, we're going to talk about materials. Then we move on to setting up the machine. After that, we are going to talk about getting your design ready in Adobe Illustrator. And then finally, a quick recap of everything we talked about while we watch a piece being cut. To begin any project on these machines, you must first have something to cut or engrave on. This means that we need to talk about the rules we have regarding materials that we allow into the machines. There are a small number of materials that are banned from being used in our laser. These items are banned for the extreme health issues that they are known to cause when placed into one of these machines. If we cannot guarantee that an item is laser safe, please know that we will treat it as though it's not for safety reasons. If you have purchased something online, you can show us where it is shown on the order or website that the item is known to be laser safe, or even that it's just a safe material, we'll just need to see that before letting your work progress. Luckily, many of the materials are oftentimes labeled with safety information or what they're made of, and so many of those tags will work as well. All materials must be cleared with a SparkPlace staff member before its use. Failure to follow this rule, or attempting to put a banned material into the laser, can result in an immediate ban from our space. Our first banned material is any treated or finished woods. Raw wood is the most common material to be laser cut or engraved, and that is why its finished counterparts are at the top of our band list. Raw wood means that the piece has no paints, oils, stains, or anything else on it. These treatments or paints can often be extremely flammable or can cause extreme health issues with their fumes. Another material we add to the wood section of band materials is bamboo. Unfortunately, it's almost always treated before being used as a material. For this reason, it can be exceptionally hard to determine if it has or has not been treated at all. The second material banned from use is polycarbonate. This material is very similar to acrylic, which can be confusing and why it is so high on our list. The material is clear, has a rigid plastic-like nature, but can be very deadly if used in our laser. There is almost no visual way to tell the difference in polycarbonate or acrylic, and the dangers of this material are the most common reason why you may be turned away with any other clear material that is not known to be acrylic or glass. The next few items on the list are vinyl, PVC, carbon fiber, and fiberglass. Each of these release incredibly dangerous gases, but are much easier to identify as a material. The gases they release range from causing damage to the machine, to incredible bodily harm, or even death. Now that we know what can't be used in our machines, let's look at some of the common materials that are wonderful choices for your project. The laser can cut through a various amount of materials, but they need to be no thicker than about a quarter of an inch. Please note that this quarter of an inch restriction only applies to cutting. If you're looking to engrave your piece, it must simply fit into the machine. As we talked about earlier, the most common material that you'll want to cut or engrave on is going to be wood. We do not have any limits on wood type, so any raw wood is completely acceptable. In the space itself, we sell thin pieces of craft board that are approximately 12 inches square and roughly an eighth of an inch thick. If this is not what you'll need, then you'll need to provide your own safe material. Wood is a strong material, and it's easy to make wonderful shapes or images engraved into it to make a plethora of fun gifts or strong prototypes. The second most common material is acrylic. Please remember that we will need to see proof that your material is indeed acrylic, or we'll treat it as polycarbonate and not allow it into the machine at all. This material is strong and can come in various colors or opacities to create very interesting shapes and designs. Much like the wood, we do have for sale approximately 12 inch square or smaller pieces at various prices in both blue and clear. Other materials such as, but not limited to, glass, cork, leather, powder coated metals, laser safe rubbers, and many other different materials are all possible to either be etched or cut in our machines. A note that'll help your project's success is that any material in our laser will need to be as flat as possible. Being flat means that the laser will stay in focus and cut or engrave evenly. Cups or round objects being used with the rotary tool will also need to have a straighter side rather than a round ball-like shape. 
Now that we know a little bit about materials, let's go ahead and start the next step, which is setting the machine up for use. These steps are simple and can go quickly. However, each step is important for the safety of the machine. We recommend that you watch this section a couple times to get the order and steps correct. First, we need to start by getting power to the machine. You can do this by turning on the power strip hanging on the wall, then both of our red switches. These red switches power the airflow systems needed to pull smell or smoke out of our machine. Next, we move on to the left side of the machine and the large rocking switch which will power the machine on. You should see the screen load up and the laser head move into its automatic home position. Make sure this is done with nothing in the machine to prevent the laser head from striking anything. Next, we can go ahead and load our material. Here, I'm using some craft board. Make sure you load all the way into the upper left hand corner as this location will be important when we tell the machine where is home a little bit later. With your material loaded in, we need to grab the focusing tool located hanging off the left of the machine with some small magnets. Place the tool arrow shaped down with its holes on the two small pegs located on bars of the laser head. Without this, you'll be unable to etch or cut your material, so please make sure the tool is sitting correctly on those pegs. With the tool loaded, we move to the buttons on the very front of the machine. You'll notice that the buttons on this panel are each numbered and many of them labeled. I'll be using the numeric system as we use the buttons on this panel. Press the 6 button to enter focus mode. In this mode, you can hit the up and down arrow buttons next to the 6 button. Hitting these buttons once will move the entire bed of the machine incrementally up or down. You can also hold these buttons to move the bed a little faster. To get the machine focused, you need to make sure your material is touching the end of the focus tool. We recommend bringing your material up to the tool until you see it shift slightly. Then back off lightly. This can be done as many times as you need or until you are happy. Press the zero button to reset the machine. This will cause the laser head to move back to its home position. Once you've focused the machine, make sure to remove the focusing tool and place it back onto the magnets on the side of the machine with the arrow facing down. You should be able to make a sort of hook on the end. After focusing, we need to find what will be the home or starting point of our machine. When the machine turned on, it automatically calibrated itself to have a home set all the way in the upper left hand corner. If your piece is square in that corner, you can go ahead and use that to skip the next steps if you'd like. However, I will show you how to set the home yourself as well. To set home, we start by hitting the 8 button. From there, you need to hit the green go button. This displays the machine's location and unlocks the motor. However, you won't normally need those locations. From here, press the 9 button to turn on the laser pointer of the machine. This dot is showing you the laser's position on your material. With a finger on top of the laser head, you can now push the head around to the location you need it. Most commonly, you'll place this dot in the upper left-hand corner of your piece. There are settings you can adjust to make it centered or somewhere else, but the default will always be top left. Once you're happy with your home position, please hit the 7 button to set that position permanently. Please note that the machine does not stay in the uppermost corner on the left for its own safety. If you have made a home position further away from the corner, however, it should stay in place. With this step, we have checked our material is focused to the machine and that the machine knows where to start. This is all we need to do on the machine currently, so we can close the lid and move over to the laptop connected to it. The next thing we need to prepare is your design in Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is the only program that you should be printing from to our laser. Unfortunately, we cannot allow any files created from Microsoft Office into our machines as they do damage them. Now, we're not going to go over much of Illustrator in this video, but please know that you can access it from any of our public computers within the space. This means that you can start from scratch or access designs from any of the laptops we have. When you're looking at Illustrator, you should see a window like this. Over here on the left, you should see a Create New button. Once clicked, you should see a window like this. In this window, we're going to use the area over here, and if you can't see these settings, you can click the Print tab up here. The first setting we need to check is Units, which can be changed with this drop-down menu. 
You can use millimeters or centimeters, but I'm going to leave it at inches. Next, we need to set the artboard size. We suggest you use the size of your material for these values. However, I know that I have a six inch square of my material to use. Orientation can also be set here, but is normally unnecessary. Finally, we click Create. Now, this white box is our artboard set up to our specifications. Let's center it up with Control-0. This command shows us the entire board blown up to take up the entire viewing screen. You can see that it's even on both the left and right sides. Now, to add your design, you need to come to File and Place to open a file browsing window. You'll need to navigate to your file, which will most likely be on a flash drive located somewhere over here. Mine, however, is right here, so let's double click. A common issue with designs created in formats that Illustrator can understand is that we may not have the fonts used in its creation. Unfortunately, we cannot download those fonts onto this laptop, so you may need to resave your file in a more image-based file type. This is especially common for designs that you're looking to etch. I, however, am not worried about the text on my design, so let's just hit OK. When placing an object, your cursor should look like this, with a small preview of your design following it around. Remember that when you click to place the object, it starts from where your cursor is located and not the preview itself. I'm gonna take this all the way up into the left-hand corner and click. Now, my object is a bit big and has pieces on it that I don't need. Let's go over how to fix that. After zooming out with Control minus, I can see that there's some text and extra space taking up most of the design. If I grab the white direct select tool, I can drag a small box over the part I don't want and delete it. This is only possible if the object is still in pieces or parts that Illustrator can understand. So this doesn't apply to all designs. From there, I can move back to the black selection tool. And with this, you can see when I click on a line, it selects everything at once. If you look over here to the right hand side, you should see an appearance box towards the middle of that sidebar. Our laser only understands lines, or stroke, that are 0.001 pixels as a cut line. You can see once I do this, it changes my design to be a very thin black line. Let's move our design over onto our artboard using the Illustrator's assistive dots to make sure that it's centered. And now that's ready to be cut on our laser. Control-0 to blow our artboard back up to the full viewing window, and you can see that it's barely there in these little thin black lines. Once we've done all of our setup, we can go to File and Print. Down in the bottom corner of this print window, there is a small setup button that you'll need to click. From the window there, click on the Preferences button towards the middle right. This blue window is the printing preferences used by Epilogue to adjust settings you need for the laser. We're going to hold up here and talk about both etching and cutting jobs for a minute. In this window, you can find every setting you need to set up for your type of job. First thing to know is what type you'll actually be doing. Rastering is for engraving only, and vectors are for cut jobs. Resolution here is for your etching jobs and is very important, however, we won't be using it today. Here in the raster settings, you can see you can adjust these on the little toggles. Let's look at one of these sliders on the side. There are a few ways to adjust this with the mouse, but I suggest you click and type your numbers into these little text boxes. Now don't hit enter after typing the numbers or it will close the box. You can, however, just click preferences again to open the window back up. We're gonna click on the vector job type as we know that's what we're going to be doing. You can see that it grays out the raster settings we no longer need. Over in the bottom corner, you have a few more options that are about personal choice or how you set the machine up. Autofocus is used if you'd like to try and forego using the steps of the focus tool, but can increase the chances of things like cuts or etching not being perfect. Center engraving is used should you need to place your home point at the center of a piece so that it fits inside of a certain area. Our piece size is going to be the size of the artboard we set up at the beginning of Illustrator. Here's a little trick in case you can't remember the size of your artboard. Click and drag the blue preferences window up a little bit, and you'll see that on the print window underneath, your document size is shown. So let's go ahead and put our six inch size in each of these boxes. Here in our vector settings, the toggles work the same as before. Setting these sliders to the settings you need is incredibly important. The space does have settings available for you, and I'm just going to plug those in now. 
Unfortunately, the frequency slider cannot be adjusted in the same way as others. You cannot type into the box and must adjust the slider manually. The plus and minus buttons here are key to getting exactly the number you need. Now, just click OK on the blue button at the bottom. This starts to work our way back towards that Illustrator print window. With the blue window gone, go ahead and click Print in the bottom of the white window as well. However, you're not ready yet. The preview window to the left isn't correct. To finish locking the settings in, you need to hit the Setup button again and the white print button one more time. This locks the settings in and you should see the preview window adjust slightly to match your artboard and design. Now you can click the print button on Illustrator. The size or complexity of your piece will determine how long it might take to get sent to the machine. If you look back over to the screen on the laser, you should see a little green data light turn on, and once that light is off, you can see the name of the file you've loaded into the machine, and you can hit the green go button. While our job runs, there's a few things I'd like to let you know. You must stay next to the machine while it is running. There is always a risk of fire while using this machine, and if you see what we consider a continued flame, please let a SparkPlace employee know immediately. Small flares are common and not to be worried about. Smoke is also pretty common, but you should see that being pulled out via the ductwork on the back of the machine. Should you need multiples of the same file and made on the same material, you can always just load your next piece in and hit the green go button again. Please know that this only works if all the settings would stay the same from piece to piece. Let's go ahead and pull our piece out of the machine. Occasionally, the piece has little bits that may not fall out perfectly. In most cases, this is fine. You might just need to put a little bit of pressure behind them to knock the piece out. Please remember to always pick up all small pieces or bits out of our machine so that you can leave a clean workstation for the next patron. Let's quickly review things we learned here today. We covered what is and is not allowed in our machine. We also covered how to set the machine up for your project. We talked about Illustrator for a little bit and how to set your file up. And we saw a complete piece cut before our very eyes. Using our lasers is a very fun and interesting way to create wonderful personalized gifts or even complete complex prototype pieces with precision. We hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was able to help you with any questions you may have had. If you ever have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to ask a SparkPlace staff member or give us a call during our open hours. Thank you so much for watching this video.